Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. We're playing some Factorio AB Plus. It's episode number 100. How are you? Hey, how is who? You. Me? And the, and the person named Steve and Joe who are watching right now. Just the, yeah, Steve. Just, Steve just and Joe are good. They're the only two I want to say hi to right now. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> so, Dave and Joe are fine. So how's it going for you? It's going all right. I'm, uh... I um you've put a lot of passive providers places that I feel would be better served as requesters. Passive providers? Wait, what? Why would you switch a passive to a requester? So you've got like the um where the Javelite chunks go, or the Sapphirite chunks. Ah shoot, yeah. that's a mod we should have gotten, Steve Joe. I should, I'm gonna uh, We need to go what get that? that. Map ping tool. Super useful. Oh. Been using it in uh, in the other save, the multiplayer thing, and you can just, the multiplayer, so. you can ping. You can just it's like ping, it's like StarCraft or Dota or any other game in the last ten years. <laughs> so anyway, sorry, where Sapphirite? I'm looking at you. Uh, yeah, the Sapphirite chunks. This was a passive provider. So I've just changed it to requester to get any um any chunks that might have been put into the system. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it was a passive provider because. I would rather have, okay, going from a regular warehouse, just adding robots to the network, like, I would rather everything be at least accessible instead of just a plain old warehouse, so. Yeah. That's the only reason I did that, just so that it was something. Feel free to change the whole factor, I know you're going to anyway. Yes. So it's been like a week since we played last, and I'm trying to remember why on earth I am making, uh, why, why am I making carbon? There was a reason. Um, because we were moving everything. Oh yeah? Are we starting over on a new save? <laughs> no, I'm doing the thing that stops us from starting over on a new save. Oh. But we could make a new save, and it'd be pretty, and clean, and organized. But we'd also not have robots. Yeah, oh well. I, oh, well. I I didn't really put much effort into those, so don't know what I mean. <laughs> you dick. Oh, there's like no output for this crushed stone, but it just keeps getting made. That sounds similar, doesn't it? Sounds familiar. No. Ah, uh, crushed on. I don't know where I want to run it though. Alright. Found out an interesting thing. Recently, uh, okay. I didn't know that you could do this. Uh, Magma was showing it to me. Apparently, in Vanilla Factorio, you can connect outputs to each other. I saw that. Yeah, it was really surprising. I had never even considered trying to do that. I'll uh, demonstrate it real quick for anyone who's unsure what I'm talking about right now. Yeah, I had no idea. Mm. All the errors in Factorio had no idea about that. Need a recipe. Oh, with there we go. I don't know how useful it is, but... So, normally you would build something like like this, right? You'd kind of like go in a, in a row, but apparently you can go like this, and then they chain together. And they'll actually like pass the fluid between them, and it just, it's so weird. Problem is Good explanation. Yeah, most of the, <laughs> most of the fluids though in what we're doing are single input, single output. Like they, they don't actually have that multi output. Yeah, the double stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we were talking about passing stuff. Or passing fluids. Uh, the way that the, um, the miners on uranium pass fluids between each other. It would be very handy. Yeah. 
And the hands. No, that's, <clears throat> that's a different thing. You're confused. Oh. Okay, so I'm trying to decide what I want to do, but I need to move that coke thing up here. I need to make sure there's room. Currently we've got a lot of Crontinium getting mined up here. I need that out of the way before I can move the coke up. Purified water. Sulfuric waste water. Do we even have sulfuric waste water like being ferried back on any kind of organized system? Or is it just kind of. Uh, there's sulfuric waste water, yeah. I'm trying to find a tie in though, and I don't see one anywhere nearby. I got oh, yeah. all kinds of fluids. Sulfuric. Oh, down there? No, there's, there's none down there. Wasn't there a little thing though that was processing sulfuric waste water? Or is that. Should I just send sulfuric waste water? Why don't you... I'm just gonna turn what it... is it for? So, so we have sulfuric acid. We had the alert it... flashing at us for a second saying we had no sulfuric acid. And, uh, oh yeah, I, I fixed that. We also need carbon for stuff. Basic electronic boards, I think. So I'm setting up coal into sulfuric wastewater plus carbon. Oh. Well, I mean, if you made it up here, which is where I'm going to have to move it anyway. I want to build a train station. Oh my god. You don't like trains? I'm gonna build a train station! It's like, okay, that's another thing I need to destroy <laughs> when I move it. <laughs> you don't have to. You choose to do these things. I don't know why, but you're just mean. I'm not mean. Try clean up the factory so it's, like, not a fucking mess. Oh. Okay. Odd. Um. Oh, I started doing the, uh... You know how you were saying the circuit network thing to... To, like, stop the trains from going if... X. Mm -hmm. uh, I started doing that on my solo campaign for oil just now. And how do you like it? Pretty That's good, pretty huh? cool. Yeah. My oil train just sits at the, the depot until um, until it's run, until I've run out of oil at the base. And the, uh, well, not run out, but until I'm at like 10k oil at the base. And the oil stations only turn on if they've got over 50k in it and then once the train reaches 50k oil in the train it'll come back to base so basically it goes there picks it up and comes back that's really cool i just like doing that so that the train stations uh like the train grid doesn't get overloaded yeah well for me it's like oil trains are just they pretty much spend all their time just waiting to get filled up. So why have a separate train for each station? Know what I mean? Yeah. That's just kind of silly. Well, also the other motivator is that if you have to change your resource, like, ore field. Like, we always used to do ore, you know, it would be iron ore 1, iron ore 2, iron ore 3. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to manually reprogram the train every time you got a new thing. And if you do it where they all have the same name, and you program them to just not overload the system, the network, and get backed up, then you have to think about it again. A train will come if you need that ore. I mean, you don't even have to have, like, 
iron ore. You can have ore, just the ore station. That's it. And and have that station only ever turn on if the base requests that ore, effectively. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a vanilla-esque version of the uh, smart uh, logistic trains mod. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it's early, early in the day. I haven't had my coffee, I haven't had my, my soda or anything, so it's taking me a little while to figure this out, but I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I'm gonna make some <laughs> this damn stuff. All right, so this is going to give us quite a bit of stuff. Quite a bit of stuff. Yes, I'm very descriptive. Yes. What are you working on, CJ? Uh, I am fixing the the little defensive turret thing. We have a new tech. Look at this one. We talked about it right before we started. I'm excited about it. Oh, the uh, boiler thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The kettle. The electric boiler, so we can have uh, ramen at any location in the factory. <laughs> nice. A cup of tea. Because I mean, it's currently tea day in the U.S., is it not? Uh, yeah, it's Fourth of July as we record, but I, uh, I don't know. I don't get too up in arms, haha, -ha, about it. <laughs> I don't really care. You don't like tea? We get fire. You know where I live? I live in, I live in Florida. You know, and uh, you know, Florida. There's a, you know, we go to Disney World. This is a thing you do. They give you like discounts if you mm -hmm. live, if you're a state resident. It's not oh, really? expensive. Yeah. Like I cruises. I love Disneyland, man. Cruises and other stuff. Anything that's like related to Florida tourism is cheaper for Florida residents. So. What? Don't, do not tell my parents that. No, you got My parents you know. will move to Florida. I think they should. It's a pretty nice place to live aside from, you know, the heat and the bugs and the alligators and. <laughs> no. It's just not bad. I don't know. I wouldn't have chosen to live here if it was just me. Uh, I would never have, like, gotten in a car and said, you know where I'm going. <laughs> Florida. But, you know, not unhappy to be here. Very diplomatic answer there. So, we uh, ended up with what? What was I talking about? I'm distracted by the fact that, the fact that we're trying to play Factorio here, Stijo. Something, uh, yeah, fucking Factorio always gets in the way. Um, you were talking about Florida? The rapper? Is oh. he a rapper? I don't know yeah. if you class that mm -hmm. as a rapper. Um, 4th of July. Fireworks. Yeah, so anyway, because we go to Disney World, we see fireworks quite often. Plus, where I grew up, we had a thing where we'd see fireworks all the time. And it's just, I don't know. It's just fireworks. There's a, there a firework uh, factory explosion recently. I don't know if you saw that. That sounds phenomenal. That sounds like every kid's dream. <laughs> Did anyone die? Sure hope not. I was gonna, I was gonna say, that's the first question before you start making jokes, Stejo. <laughs> right. 
There we go. That's been bugging me for fucking ages. I done a really weird angle on the uh, on the defensive perimeter, and it was really annoying me. <laughs> so I've fixed it now. I am glad to hear this. I don't know why you did it in a weird angle in the first place, but. Uh, nor do I. Why is all this shit stopped going in there? Oh, it's because it only takes a maximum of 70,000 stuff, but we're like maxed out on lead ore and gold ore right now. I'm trying to think of what's the best way to do this properly so that you always get a nice mix of everything, but I think you would need a... I don't know what you would need. Nice mix of everything. What type of... Everything? <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, on the f or sorting facilities. So right now we're using... Obviously we're using a lot of uh, aluminum and whatever the fuck this other shit is. Forget it. Uh, nickel. We're using a lot of aluminum and nickel. Well, not obviously we're using, but we are using a lot of it. So the provider chest at the, the end of the rubyite flotation sort and shite uh, is just full of, full of gold and lead. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're not letting any more in because there's already like 70,000 ore in there, too. but just gold and lead. So currently we're not getting any aluminium or nickel because of that. Uh, I think oh. what we would do is instead of doing the rubite chunk sorting, if you if you look, uh, go to your crafting menu and just search for sort. And you look at rubite chunk sorting, you can see that we get two bits of lead, one bit of nickel, one bit of gold, one bit of aluminum. Mm -hmm. But if you actually look at the things you can do with rubite chunks, you can take it, and I think there's a combination sort. Hmm. Rubite chunks can be used in uh, rubite chunk sorting, which is what we're doing. They can also be used to make nickel and aluminum directly if you add in javolite chunks and a mineral mineral catalyst. Okay. So if you want, like, aluminum, for example, you can make pure aluminum. Use the javolite and rubite chunks like they're the, well, they're the ingredients, what they are. <laughs> Just stockpile them independently, like, sort them into warehouses and then send pure pure belts and that stuff to other sorting facilities yeah we, we can make mineral catalysts pretty easily it's just mineral sludge i think we should do that that should be our project anyway this is gonna make 35.53 coke that's too much so need two belts Oh. Hmm. We actually have no coal in the system. Coal, coal? Coal, coal, yeah. I requested quite a bit of it here. Um, we ran out of coal. We're not playing with uh, Omnite, so we can't just make coal. Yeah. What do you want to do about it? Oh. 
I'm going to set up an outpost. Okay. Do I have any... Did you automate laser turrets? I can't remember. I did. Oh, nice. And you continue to not use them for a long, long time. I don't really know why. I think it's just Mark 1s, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Okay. I'll just wait until we get some. But, unfortunately, we're going to have to call it an episode there. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that's <laughs> us uh, stopping playing Factorio. We're going to have to be done for forever now. But we'll be back tomorrow, which will not be on the 4th of July anymore, which makes some people sad, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, no, technically, no. this episode is not coming out on the 4th of July. This will be out on the 5th. Will it? Yeah. All right. I suppose. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be, uh, it'll be in the 5th for me. I'll be on the 4th for you. Time zones, Arimba. That's why I said, really? Because it <laughs> seems like it will be, actually. <laughs> okay, I'll be on the 4th of July for Americans, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Alright, anyway. Alright, see you guys next time. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.